Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Collider Dailies. I am John Algets, and joining me, as always, is... Maggie Lovett. Again, this is like the third time in a row that I've said... As always. Joining me, as always. <laughs> and it's a, it's a rotating group of people, so... <laughs> That's not always going to be true, but you know what? Whatever. You're 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 my favorite co-host. I'll, I'll go on record saying that. Ah. <laughs> the other two better step up. Anyways, uh, <laughs> they need to get so all the to, puns. That's the key. It's the, it's the bad jokes and puns. I would actually say the puns are negative points for okay, you. Okay. Well, agree to disagree. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so today we we have a very Star Wars filled day. We're going to be talking about uh, the news that Dave Filoni has gotten a promotion at Lucasfilm and is going to be a creative director, right? Is that Chief. Yeah. yeah Chief. I don't I don't have the article pulled up, so I don't actually know the job title. But he's going to be doing that. The information that he apparently wants to continue Balin Skull's story, which I mean makes sense, but uh, it's in an in an interesting place with the passing of Ray Stevenson last year. Uh, and then of course we have information that uh, Daisy Ridley was actually surprised or at least uh, the script for, or the story for her Ray film is not what she expected. So we're going to be talking about that, but before we get into that, there is like kind of some big news in Hollywood, at least something that a lot of people are talking about. And so we need to at least report it for all of you so that everyone is aware of what is going on and then we can move into the sort of fun part of the show <laughs> yesterday uh melissa barrera an actress uh who worked on you know the scream series was actually let go from screen from scream seven uh because of some posts that she made on social media that were pro palestine and used some language that spyglass uh was not super keen on um that's really all that we know at this point um it is also just broke that jenna ortega is also not going to be taking part in scream 7 although her statement on it is that it is not related to melissa barrera's firing uh it's one of it seems that it was it was uh wednesday right was that what they were saying yeah. something to do with wednesday I'm seeing that we might not have sound on our episode. We might not have sound. Yes. Okay. Let's check on that real quick before we get too far into this. Okay. Yeah, I I can hear it on our stream. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so, and Arzu says that she can hear us. So, all right. Anyways, yes. Uh, so Scream 7 is in kind of a rocky place right now, it seems. Um, we'll, we'll keep you updated as more information comes out and as more, you know, it develops a little bit further, but just know that that's kind of where things are right now in a nutshell. And that's really all that we're going to say on that. Uh, so yeah, let's now move on into the main topics of today and let's start off with the Collider exclusive information that uh, we got about the Ray film that is going to be coming out in the near future. Uh, and that is that Daisy Ridley sat down with uh, Steve Weintraub and talked about, talked about the film and talked about, you know, basically didn't give us a lot, but gave us a little bit of something. Uh, she was talking about the story and she said, quote, the story is really cool. I'm waiting to read a script because obviously I don't have any other updates but it's not what I expected, but I'm very excited. So it seems like it's going to be a story that, you know, even she wasn't, you know, predicting to be coming along. And a Ray film, I know, is something that there is a certain element of the Star Wars fandom who maybe aren't super excited about. But I am of the I'm opinion. I'm excited. <laughs> I, I'm of the opinion that I believe that with a different creative team behind it, I am very curious to see where Ray as a character can go. Because I think there's a lot of potential there. The sequels might not have necessarily just done a very good job of showcasing her as a character. So I am very interested to see, to see more of her. 
How do you feel about this, Maggie? I'm excited. Um, I hope that the unexpected is what I hope for. Like my, my expected is her unexpected. Um, I am cautiously optimistic. I'm not super happy with where things end it for Ray's story with the rise of Skywalker. Um, so I hope that we have some cor like course correction with different creatives that may understand like female characters slightly better. Um, and yeah, I'm like cautiously optimistic, fingers crossed. What would you like to see with a plot? Like, do, do you want to see her establishing a new Jedi order? Is that where you want to see it go? Or do you want to see it like do something really weird? Like, I understand why people want her to establish a new Jedi Order, and I think at a certain point, I also wanted that, but at this point, I am, like, so jaded in the Jedi that unless there's, like, a huge change in, like, the, the ethics of being a Jedi and some of, the, like, the beliefs of being a Jedi, we are just setting up the galaxy to repeat the same thing, which I'm all about compulsion to repeat is one of my favorite like aspects of like literature, but um, we've kind of done it too many times. And like, we need to cut that, like that, that cycle off, like, cut, you know, break the chains or whatever. So we don't continue to just have Jedi fall. Um, you know, it's not, it's not as exciting to have that happen over and over again. So I do hope that if she is setting up the Jedi, she's setting it up with new principles, new ideas that will hopefully help people find balance because so much of what her story arc was about was bringing balance to the force. And you have like the beautiful last Jedi imagery with um, the mural and the, the idea of both, you know, kind of possessing the dark side and the light side and finding that like that middle path. And I think that's something that I would really like to see her character get to explore more. Um, also, obviously I would like Ben Solo to come back. Um, I can't. Yeah. See, like, I don't, I don't, I didn't get that. Like, you, how, how would you ever guess that? Um, <laughs> so, like, I would love that to be, like, the unexpected thing. They obviously have, like, a way around his quote-unquote death at the end of The Rise of Skywalker because they didn't show his Force ghost when they could have. He also just, like, vanished, which isn't, like, yeah, they kind of vanished, but, like, it was done differently. And, like, there's definitely things that they could play with, especially now that we've kind of established the world between worlds with you know, Ahsoka, and there's definitely avenues to explore there that I think would be good. And also, uh, Ben Solo fans um, will make sure that's the biggest blockbuster in the world. Um, also, Raylos will just the, make sure it's the biggest blockbuster in the world. So, uh, if I think the play. biggest the biggest hurdle with that aspect would be Adam Driver coming back. Yeah, but you know, he's looking awfully Ben Solo-y right now. So he's got his his luscious hair. He, he's done some prestige stuff. You know, he's made his money. He can come back and bring us Ben Solo again. I mean, I'm not saying that it's impossible, but you know, I'm just saying that I think that would be the biggest hurdle to that idea. But as well, far as, as far as the whole, like... We, we, the, the fans want him back, so... As far as the whole like Jedi thing, are you are you saying that you you believe that they should let the past die, you know, kill it uh, yeah, if they like, have to? I think Ben Solo kind of had a point, uh, and he you know had some firsthand experience uh, of you know what happens when somebody tries to start up the Jedi Order again. Also, he was framed. He is not responsible for the the temple. He was framed. Uh, read the comics, um, and the books. But anyways, yeah, like I just I'm. I don't want to say I'm tired of the Jedi because I do like the Jedi. I'm just tired of the Jedi consistently repeating the same mistakes they've made before. Um, well, the the history of the Jedi is a history of failure. That's yeah. that's literally like a and like that, it's yeah. like you have to move on. You have to be the phoenix that rises from those ashes and you know finds a better purpose. So we'll see. I'm I mean I'm excited. I love Daisy. I love Ray. Um, you know. Hopeful. I I will say I do I do definitely agree that I think that if if they are going to do a like a Jedi Order thing, it should be something it should like the Jedi should be completely different than what we've yeah. seen on film before. And please I please don't name it the New Jedi Order. Please don't call the movie that. Please please don't. I mean I don't think that I think that would at least be a better title than the Rise of Skywalker. Oh yeah, well that yeah. um. I would like to see, I would like to, if they do revisit the Jedi idea, I would like to see them kind of return to the idea of like the wandering knight version of Jedi. Yeah. Sort of the, the high Republic y stuff. Yeah. Anything that's high Republic ish is like, you got my stamp of approval. I actually, so I have, uh, 
a several hour drive ahead of me later on today as I go home to my family for Thanksgiving. Uh, and so I have my Audible credit and I spent it on a High Republic book. My influencing I, works. <laughs> I wanted to get into it before you. Okay. It's just that you like talk about it a lot. <laughs> my brand is strong. <laughs> <laughs> you and your you and your audible uh okay so you know maybe the ray film will uh will come together a little bit better because uh filoni will be at the at the helm yes to have uh, this conversation i think i need to put on my uh cowboy I'm, hat okay well you know you do that <laughs> and, uh, i'll do this and i'll sit here go. with this um so actually that is like i don't know how how annoying that is to have on camera with the sound but uh yeah no uh so dave filoni was actually promoted to chief creative officer at lucasfilm which means that he will kind of uh oops turn my lightsaber on again uh he will kind of be the guy doing uh all the like plotting and running about and making the decisions uh as he stated uh he will be um, in a more of an advisory position uh, stating like part of a Jedi council is the way that he referred to it. Uh, but it's definitely going to be putting him in uh, a position of power, someplace to be making more decisions as far as like the direction that star Wars seems to be going. Uh, how do you feel about that? Cause I know that you've had some, yeah, I some think, opinions, but the thing the is, this is very much in line with what I've said that Dave is the strongest in doing. Like he's a good idea guy. And this very much seems like an idea guy, the guy in the chair talking to the, the council to help kind of, you know, cultivate ideas. And that sounds like a sweet spot for him. Um, it also like, I hope will help bring about the idea of like writer's rooms, because if he's really busy doing all of this stuff, he'll obviously need like another group of people working on ideas and writing and stuff. So I think this might actually be a really good thing for Star Wars. And I also think it's funny that this is like, this is the position that so many like fanboys and girls and, and in-betweens on the internet think that Pablo Hidalgo has been doing for years, which has never been his job. So I think it's funny that now they're like, ah, that's who's actually the guy that if you're mad about something, you should yell at. <laughs> like now they know. <laughs> One thing that I've been saying about Star Wars, and I've been saying this for a while, was that I always felt like Star Wars needed needed a, like, maybe not necessarily a Kevin Feige, but someone a little bit more of a guiding hand yeah. overseeing the whole thing. And if that is what this is kind of going to be... And it sounds I think like that, it? I, like, I think that would, you know, to your point, that is a good place for Filoni to be, because I feel like Filoni, like, outside of Clone Wars, which is fantastic and like i'm i'm gonna exclude this that from this statement filoni does his best work i feel when he's teamed up with creatives mm -hmm. so like looking at mandalorian him working with john favreau was like perfect because favreau was handling you know the the directory filmmaking side of things but filoni was the one sitting there being like well here's like the lore of this random background alien that apparently has like an entire you know, biology textbook written about it. He has all of that information. So putting him in a position where he's overseeing the lore and making the big sweeping creative choices, I think would be a good spot for him to be. Um, so here's to hoping that maybe this is going to lead to a more cohesive Star Wars, which yeah. I almost feel like is a little bit of, of a problem. It's, it's felt a little disjointed for a while um but we'll see uh t and j omaha says uh filoni isn't the hero people online think he is he's too tied to lore that the core audience of 10 year olds find finds inaccessible well His we viewership on ahsoka you. speaks for itself uh i get i get that yeah. that viewpoint on it um I mean, there is definitely yeah yeah there is there is definitely a downside to being so like knowledgeable of lore that it does there is a possibility that it can limit uh, some of your creativity, but you know, I think that on the whole, it's good to have an understanding of these sort of things, especially because with the star Wars fan base, the star Wars fan base in general is very lore focused. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> they have a really, almost really to a hard, detrimental hard, degree. Yeah, really hard time, you know, distancing themselves and understanding the concept of from a certain point of view. Yeah. But, you know, it, it could be good. But, you know, Dave Filoni does want to do quite a few stuff. He's been vocal about like things that he would like to see. And one thing that he would like to see is he would like to continue Balin Skull's story. Mm -hmm. uh, Balin Skull, of course, in my opinion, probably the highlight of the Ahsoka series. Absolutely loved what Ray Stevenson did. Um, major bummer that he passed away because not only because he's just such a talent and anytime that you lose somebody like that, it's hard, but also just like, we got this fantastic character from him yeah. and it was left open to, you know, continue his story. And, you know, it sounds like maybe we will see that. And maybe it's one of those sort of things where we'll see it in a different medium. Maybe, yeah, maybe that could be a good way to go. What would, what, what would you like to see with Balin Skull's story with the um, way it was left off? How could you see that continuing? I can't even begin to, fully fathom exactly where it was going because it was left open so broadly, which I think inadvertently ended up working. Star Wars has had this really weird pattern of when they've lost somebody after a movie has been filmed or a TV show has been filmed, like somehow their story perfectly works for like leaving the door open for things. Like it happened with, with Leia and the, La the, the last Jedi and it happened again here. Um, so I personally, I can't even think exactly where the story could go, but I know it is something that I would like to see more of. I, like, I agree with you completely that he was one of the more compelling characters, um, even though he really had limited screen time, every moment that he was on like screen was like really, you know, fascinating. And I want more of his dynamic with his like apprentice and like the, the mirroring of their, um, master and apprenticeship with what was going on with Ahsoka and Sabine was really interesting. So there's definitely a, a lot of room to play with that. And it is, it is curious and like interesting to see how it's going to continue. You know, are they going to, you know, create something like a secondary medium to tell that story, like a comic book, there's a lot of room there, or are they going to recast? Are they going to have him like have been injured and look differently? Like there's a lot of ways that they can play with. I mean, this is a, a universe where people wear masks and they get horrifically injured and they come back looking different. Um, so there's like lots of things that they can play with to continue that story. And I'm really glad because that was one of the things that I was really worried about when Ahsoka ended like, are we going to get more of the story or are they just going to be like, okay, well the actor died. So we can't continue the story. It's just going to be lost. And so it is nice to have that confirmation. Cause that makes me yeah. feel a little bit better about an Ahsoka season two or the movie or wherever that story continues. I do think that if like this, if his story continues in whatever medium it does, I would very much like to see. And I think that it's, it's very much the way it was left off. It was very much primed to continue and to sort of, tell a story that is maybe a little bit more of an exploration of like the mystical side of the force, hmm. maybe get a little bit deeper into like, how does it work? Like where, like maybe deconstruct the force a little bit and go into it because the way the force has always just kind of been, Oh, it's this mystical thing that binds everyone together. And then the one time that they tried to explain it, all they managed to do was just anger fans. Yeah. But maybe now we're at a point where it's like, okay, with this like side th piece with like a side story, be it a comic or like an animated series or something like that, maybe we're in a good spot where we can start exploring yeah. you know, what is the force? Yeah, where does I mean it come from? Like, the books have done that, you know, speaking to the High Republic, like there's a lot of really interesting um, depictions of the Force in those books with how the Force feels to different Force users. You know, for some of them, it feels like a song connecting everybody together and everyone's a different note. For some, it feels like like the ocean and like everyone's part of the current. And like, I like a lot of the stuff that we've, we've gotten in the books and the way they describe the Force because that hasn't really been shown on screen at all. And anytime that, you know, fans have kind of collectively come to those agreements has been because of like a, a conversation online or like some sort of like, you know, things that fans have created themselves about what the force is. We haven't necessarily seen 
like a concrete like discussion of what the force is on screen. I mean, Luke tried in the last Jedi and like you said, and angered everybody, um, you know, right. and there's, there's a lot of stuff there. I mean, we, you know, recently got this idea of dyads in the force and like, there's lots of like interesting concepts that haven't been fully explored that, you know, would be fun. And, and like, again, I cannot think of any better character than Balin to mm -hmm. be the one who, explores that because he 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 already kind of exists in this weird spot where he's not a sith he's not a jedi like he's kind of just a i guess a dark jedi would be the old school say, classification he, he, for him he also very much feels like the gray jedi concept too like i feel like he and qui-gon jen would have been like bffs i know star wars fans don't hate me in the comments i know people hate the whole gray jedi thing but i think it's an interesting concept that has been played upon yeah. because there are a lot of jedi that we're getting to experience that fall into that category and i mean that's a good place then for them to establish what exactly this type of force user is that kind of falls outside of the parameters of the Jedi, but isn't necessarily into what the Sith are up to. And like that yeah. to me, moral ambiguity and like the that vibe that I mean, that's one of the reasons I like Qui-Gon Jinn so much. He's like one of my favorite characters. And I think Balin falls into that same like, I'm doing this by my own like rules. And that's yeah. a fun character. That's always going to be like a really cool character to play with. I think the concept of a gray Jedi is something that like the way that some fans sort of conceptualize a great Jedi, I understand why people find that to be annoying or don't like that concept. Yeah. But I think that if, if you approach it a little bit less like structured, because that's the problem I think with a lot of great Jedi stuff mm -hmm. is that people are like, they almost start to treat it like a separate order. And it's like, yeah. no, it's, it's somebody who falls kind of just in the middle they don't necessarily yeah. like, like an agnostic force user basically <laughs> basically yeah and like also throughout both legends canon and a little bit now in like main canon there's a lot of other like groups of people who use the force in different ways mm -hmm. and so maybe a great jedi is just another name for somebody like that who just uses the force in a different way than you know, than everybody else. Uh, as Ace Cable is saying, chaotic neutral characters are always the most fascinating. I don't know if I'd necessarily say most fascinating. As as someone who is a forever DM, I actually <laughs> don't like having neutral characters at my table, but that's just mostly because like players tend to use neutral as just an excuse to do whatever the hell they want. But I understand what you were saying there. Uh, but I, I do feel like maybe having Balin explore the, the deeper aspects of the force that we don't see in a main story, I think could be a, definitely a great way to go. And yeah. he's certainly set up, I feel, at the end of the series to kind of be doing that. Yeah. So I'd be down for that. So if Dave Filoni wants to do that, he can also just take any of the ideas that we just threw out here, <laughs> yeah. like just run with it. Yeah. Because you know, he you know Dave, right? Yeah, he's he's totally watching us right now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dave watches. Dave's yeah. a Dave's a regular Collider Dailies viewer, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, for legal, <laughs> he's probably in the comments. For like, legal, maybe he's one of the. Is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? <laughs> but anyways that's where we're gonna end the show today um i'm curious to to know uh all of you who are watching whether you're watching live or you're watching this later or you're listening to it in podcast form let us know what would you want to do with a balin skull story or you know what would you want to do with a ray story you know let us know or you ben can solo out. story or a ben solo story <sighs> let the past die maggie no Bringing that boy Anyways, <laughs> I, I'm sure all of the Raylo fans, it would just make all of the money. So it, I guess it makes fiscal sense. Um, but anyways, let us know what story you would like to see. And, uh, you know, let us know. Hit us up on any of the social media platforms that we're on uh, or leave it down in the comments. You know, just wherever you can find us, let us know. Uh, 
couple of things of housekeeping. Maggie, this is going to be one of the last times that we can uh, have you give your fan expo spiel. So, I know. So <laughs> it is with it. So tomorrow I am flying to San Francisco with Ooh. our Zoom men so that we will be moderating a whole bunch of really awesome panels at Fan Expo in San Francisco. It starts on Friday and it ends in, on Sunday. Uh, we have panels with a bunch of cool Star Wars people. So if you're out there, definitely, you know, grab tickets and come. If you're not, keep your eyes on Collider because we'll have stories and different things throughout the weekend. And most excitedly, I mean, there's a lot of things to be excited about, but we are doing a live recording of Collider Dailies uh, on Friday, which we will air sometime next week. Uh, but if you are attending Fan Expo, come to the Creator Stage on Friday and watch Arzu and I talk about the weekend and whatever crazy news breaks over the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. So I am time. super excited to watch I'm really excited too. you guys do that in person. Like that's going to be, that's going to be so much, so much fun. Uh, speaking of Thanksgiving, we will have an episode tomorrow. It's going to be pre-recorded. We have a we have an interview. Um, do we want to tell them who? I think we should say who we have on tomorrow. I think we should. Uh, we 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 had the the pleasure of speaking with Felicia Day about uh, Third Eye and just her her career in general. Uh, so be sure to check that out. It will be posted at the time that we have a regular show. So if you're used to watching us at 10 a.m. It'll be there. Um, so that's going to be fantastic. So I I thought that was a just a, a brilliant conversation. So I'm really excited to have everyone watch that. Uh, yeah. Uh, with all that being said, no shave November. Go give money to the American Cancer Society to help fight prostate cancer. Uh, I will be shaving this live on the show next week. So... Be ready for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I hope that you guys have, if you're in the U.S., I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, stuff yourself with all manner of, you know, turkey and stuffing and cranberry sauce. Or and all vegetarian that options. Or vegetarian options. And stuffing's vegetarian, depending yeah. on the stuffing. Yeah, depending on who uh, makes it. <laughs> if, it's, if it's not the stuffing that is actually used to stuff the bird. Yeah. And also depending on the brand of stuffing, um, whatever it is that you eat, no matter what, whatever your dietary restrictions are self-imposed or otherwise, uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving, spend it with friends, family, loved ones, whoever it is that you value in your life. Uh, actually, you know what, Maggie, since, since this is our, our last proper episode before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. what are you thankful for? You know, it's going to be really cheesy to say I'm thankful for Collider, but this year has had so many like incredible opportunities because of working at Collider and Collider Dailies has definitely been like an unexpected highlight of like the entirety of this like last half of the year. So yeah, it's going to be cheesy and say Collider and the, the group that I work with. I would, I mean, honestly, I would definitely say Collider as well. Uh, you know, work isn't always the coolest thing. Like, I feel like that no matter where you work, that's a thing, but the opportunities that have been afforded me since I joined the team and I didn't, I joined Collider not even that long ago. You, yeah. Like it was, it was only like maybe a few months ago that I joined and already the opportunities have been, you know, just stuff that I absolutely treasure. And, uh, I, just have I, I have to pinch myself sometimes so that I get to do this sort of stuff for a living. Same. I'm also, you know, obviously very, very much thankful for, you know, my family and all that sort of yeah. stuff. I I get to go tomorrow, I get to go hang out with my two baby nieces and I'm Aww. very thankful that I get to do that. Uh I love being an uncle. Being an uncle is the best. Uh because I don't I, I get all the fun parts of being a parent without the lame <laughs> parts. I get to give them sugar and send them back to their parents. Yeah. Um, Boil them rotten and then send them home. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's a lot of things to be thankful for. I'm thankful for Baldur's Gate 3. I am too. I was just sitting here. I'm like, would it be corny if I said Baldur's Gate 3? <laughs> I was surprised that you didn't. I uh, thought that, and I thought, no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways... I hope you have a wonderful holiday if you're celebrating. If you're not celebrating, just have a just have a kick Good ass Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> just have a just have a wonderful almost end of your week. And uh after Thanksgiving, uh, I believe that uh Perry and Steve have an episode on mm -hmm. Friday and then our regular normal normal schedule will resume 
next week. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Yep. Anyways, I hope you have a magnificent rest of your week and then into the weekend and see you later.